Lesson number five, vectors and scalars. What is a vector? What is a scalar? What's the difference? Let's say we're driving in your car from the boroughs to Boston. If I turn and ask you what is your speed, you would obviously look at your compass and say, well, that speed is 60 miles per hour. But if I ask you what is your velocity, you again will look at the speedometer and say 60 miles per hour, but you would need to add in what direction we're traveling in. And from the boroughs to Boston, that would be east. So while your speed would be 60 miles per hour, your velocity would be 60 miles per hour east. Throughout the year, we'll be classifying physics concepts as either vectors or scalars. A vector is a concept that has both magnitude and direction. It answers the questions how much and which way. A scalar is a concept that has only magnitude and no direction, meaning it only answers the question how much. Our concepts that we've talked about so far have been distance. Do you think distance is a vector or a scalar? Well, it turns out distance is a scalar. So we could say we're traveling a distance of 20 meters. But if you add which way, then that means we're talking about our displacement. So that would convert distance into displacement if we said we're going 20 meters to the west. What about speed? Is it a scalar or a vector? Well, just in the last example, we said our speed, uh, maybe it's 60 uh, miles per hour. So if you don't give direction, that speed. But if you do give a direction, that would change your speed into a velocity. And we would say that our velocity then would have been 60 miles per hour east if we're headed from the boroughs to Boston. Another concept of acceleration we've talked about. Is it a scalar or a vector? Well, acceleration is a vector because we could have a positive or negative acceleration, if you remember. Maybe we have a negative 2 meters per second squared acceleration rate. The negative sign would be an indicator of direction. What about time? Is time a scalar or a vector? Well, time is a scalar. We could say that 30 seconds have elapsed or that it's 4 p.m., that would not include a direction. You wouldn't say 4 p.m. north or south. Here's a new concept we haven't done yet. Temperature. Is it a scalar or a vector? Well, temperature is also a scalar. You would say maybe the temperature today is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. You would not say that it's 72 degrees north, south, east, or west. Let's look at an example of displacement vectors. Here we are at Algonquin Regional High School. Maybe you're driving your car outside Bartlett Street. So maybe we're right about here and we travel down Bartlett Street and then we take a left hand turn onto Route 20 and travel a certain distance down here. Maybe this distance that we've traveled first is 100 meters and then we took a left turn and traveled for 200 meters. Well what's the total distance? How far did we drive? Well that's easy. That's 100 meters plus our 200 meters or just 300 meters traveled. But what's our displacement? Otherwise, how do we account for our directions? Well, we started right here and we ended up over here. So the question is, what is this distance and in what direction did we travel? If we can approximate th these directions here as 100 meters north, if you look at our compass over here, and we can say that this 200 meters is west. So if we travel 100 meters north and 200 meters west, how far did we get and in what direction? We would call this angle theta here and we need to know what that angle is. To do that we'll need to do some geometry and some trig since you see here we have a right triangle that we're dealing with and we can use Pythagorean theorem and trig functions on that. Here's just a quick review of Pythagorean theorem if you recall, on a right triangle here, the sides or legs a squared plus b squared will equal c squared, the hypotenuse. And if we look at our trig functions here, a quick review, here's our right triangle, here's our right angle. According to our angle alpha, this side would be adjacent to the angle, this side here would be opposite to the angle, and of course here's our hypotenuse, whereas the sine of that angle would be opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Okay, we're back to our problem here. We want to take 100 meters north 
and add it to 200 meters west and see what our resultant displacement is. If we move our vectors here, here's 100 meters north. We want to add it to 200 meters west and our resultant displacement will be right here. So we're looking to find out what this side is, what the magnitude is, the distance, and then also the direction we want to know what this angle is. We have 100 meters north and 200 meters west. Let's use Pythagorean theorem to find out what that third side is, the red side, the hypotenuse. So we'll do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is going to be 100 meters squared plus 200 meters squared and that equals c squared. 100 meters squared plus 200 meters squared is actually 50,000 will equal c squared. To find c, that's going to be the square root of 50,000. If you do that on your calculator, you'll find that it is 223.61 meters. So there's our magnitude, there's our how much part. So we can write that on our diagram, 223.61 meters for our magnitude. Now let's find our direction, which is this angle right here. We'll have to do uh, we can do sine, cosine, or tangent. Maybe we'll do tangent right now to do that. So we'll take tangent of the angle. Let's call that angle theta right here. So tangent of theta is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the side opposite of that angle is 200. The adjacent side is 100, so that's going to give us tangent of the angle is equal to 2. To find the angle then we need to take the inverse tangent, tan minus 1, of 2. If you do that on your calculator, the inverse tangent of 2 is actually 63 degrees. So that gives us an angle of 63 degrees. So this angle here then is 63. Our final answer for our resultant displacement would then be 223.61 meters at 63 degrees. Determining the direction of the resultant vector. This is also known as the heading. And we would say that it's so many degrees blank of blank and inserting some directions here. The so best way to do this is to do it by example. If we look here, here we have a resultant vector that's at a 10 degree angle uh, with the east axis. We could say that that would be 10 degrees north of east, meaning that we would start in the east direction and have to go 10 degrees towards the north to get onto that vector. Let's look at the next one here. We have 30 degree angle here. Uh, see if you can do that. Hit pause for a moment. Okay, if we do that here, we would say that that could be 30 degrees west of south because if we start in the south direction here, we'd have to go 30 degrees towards the west. Another acceptable answer would be 60 degrees south of west, where if we started west we'd go 60 degrees towards the south. And our final example here is just what our last problem was. See if you can resolve what that heading is. Hit pause. Okay. We would say that that would be 63 degrees. I would say that is west of north. Because I would want to start towards the north and have to go 63 degrees towards the west of north to get on that vector. Thank you for watching and see you in class.